Good morning. Welcome to Daily Victory. I'm Pastor Joanne Wooten, and I am excited to uh, speak to you today. The theme for the month here at Victory has been about prayer, and so I'm going to continue in that vein. I will be sharing several areas of prayer, but for now, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about um, Jesus. Did you know that Jesus prayed for himself? He actually prayed for himself. So we're going to look at Matthew uh, chapter 26. And we're going to look at verses 31 to 46. And it says, first we're going to start with uh, 31. Jesus again predicts Peter's denial. On the way, Jesus told them, tonight all of you will desert me. For the scriptures say, God will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you in Galilee and meet you there. Peter declared, even if everyone deserts you, I will never desert you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, Peter. This very night before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. Mm. No, Peter persist insisted. Even if I have to die with you, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the other disciples vowed the same. Now, we'll look at Jesus agonizing in the Garden of Gethsemane. Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and he said, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little further and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, praying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet, I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. He said to Peter, now he didn't say to James and John, he said to Peter, couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray. Keep watch and pray. Keep watch and pray so that you will not give into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus left them a second time and prayed, My father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open. So he went away a third time, saying the same things again. Then he came to the disciples and said, go ahead and sleep, have your rest. But look, the time has come. The son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let's be going. Look, my betrayer is here. So Jesus was in anguish and he was in sorrow, but he prayed. Jesus came to earth, we know for a lot of reason. He came because the sin in the garden of Gethsemane and we had lost fellowship and connection with the Father God, and we needed to have someone. We needed a second Adam. We need to have someone with pure blood, not tainted blood, sinless blood, to be the way that we could return to fellowship and communion with the Father. And so Jesus came. All the disciples declared that they would die before denying Jesus. A few hours later, however, they all scattered. See, talk is cheap. It is easy to say we are devoted to Christ, but our claims are meaningful only when they are tested in the crucible of persecution. So how strong is your faith? Is it strong enough to stand up under intense trial? Jesus was in great anguish over his approaching physical pain, separation from the Father. And death for his sins of the for the sins of the world, not his sins for the sins of the world. The divine course was set, but he, in his human nature, still struggled. 
because of the anguish Jesus experienced, he can relate to our suffering. Jesus' strength to obey came from his relationship with God, the Father, who is also the source of our strength. See, Jesus came to be the example, not only that he be the way that we have right fellowship with the Father, but he is an example walking as a son of man in the earth so that we can identify with him. So when we see, know what Jesus did, what he went through, I always say, what did Jesus say? What did he not say? What did Jesus do? What did he not do? Where did Jesus go? Where did, where did Jesus not go? If we look to him as our example, we'll know how to walk through this life through every situation, good, bad, or indifferent. So, he was not rebelling against his father's will when he asked that the cup of suffering and separation be taken away. In fact, he reaffirmed his desire to do God's will by saying, yet I want your will to be done, not mine. His prayer reveals to us his terrible suffering. His agony was worse than death because he paid for all sin, all sin of mankind, by being separated from God. So not only the physical anguish, but being separated from his father. The sinless son of God took our sins upon himself to save us from suffering and separation. Hallelujah. Praise God. So in times of suffering, people sometimes wish they knew the future or they wish they could understand the reason for the anguish. Jesus knew what lay ahead of him. Uh, he knew what lay ahead of him. OK, and he knew the reason. Even so, his struggle was intense, more wrenching than any struggle he will ever have to face. So what does it take to be able to say, I want your will to be done? What will you lay down? What will be the cost to you to say that? It takes firm trust in God's plan. It takes prayer and obedience, prayer and obedience, each step of the way. See, Jesus used Peter's drowsiness to warn him, warn him about the kinds of temptation he would soon face. The way to overcome temptation is to keep alert and pray. Keep alert means being aware of the possibilities of temptation sensitive to the subtleties and spiritually equipped to fight it. Because temptation strikes when we are most vulnerable, okay, we can't resist it alone. We need help. We need Jesus. We need the blood. We need the word. We need the Holy Spirit. Prayer is essential because God's strength can shore up our defenses and defeat Satan's power. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. So with that said, I wanted to start with Jesus prayed and all he went through. That means if he prayed, that means we should pray. So that we, and see this is the beauty, we're not alone. We have his name, we have the blood, we have the Holy Spirit, we have the word of God, we have angels assigned to our lives, we're not alone. But prayer and the word of God is key. So with that, I'm going to close on this and we'll get together for the next topic about prayer. In the meantime, donate on our website at victoryexperience.com or text donate to 302-324-5400. To join us on the call after this broadcast in the United States, call 302-561-6767. If you're in Canada, call 709 5 Zero zero six seven six seven. So please share this broadcast on your social media. Have a blessed day and continue to pray in Jesus' name.